So if you just came off of watching The Last Airbender, this is the best place to continue if you want to see more of Aang's story. Hello guys, welcome back to another video of Before You Read, where I review books and TV and other things of that sort, where I talk about what I didn't like, what I did like, and if I recommend it or not. Today, we're going to talk about Avatar The Last Airbender, The Promise. And no, this will be a non-spoiler review. We will do a spoiler review in our next video, which is aptly named After You Read The Promise. So what I liked about this book the most, and it's the most consistent over the three comic arc or three graphic novel arc, is the, the voices. Like, I could actively hear every character's voice in my head, whether it was Sokka and his jokes, uh, Zuko and his brooding, or Aang and his, you know, carefreeness. All of it is really, really loud. I think the, the, the writing for the characters themselves is done really well. It feels like a direct continue. I mean, it is actually a direct continuation of The Last Airbender. In particular, the first few pages actually overlap with the last episode of Book Three Fire. And this to me, like the comics, I feel like, and I've always felt this about the comics, um, and this is by the way, a reread for me. It's not a, a completely new read, but I haven't read it in years. Uh, but the thing about these comics that, that work so well is that it really is a continuation of the animation series. So if you're really into that, the next best thing, instead of actually getting, you know, voice actors or getting, you know, actual fluid animation, are these comics. And I think that works really well even for the for the bending, uh, the fighting that's in here. You can still get the idea of the movement uh, that's still very much implemented. Uh, like, like I said, the character voices, the interaction, the, the, the dynamics are so good. For instance, Zuko in this is so, so good. He steals the show again, as he always does with this series. But the most interesting thing to me was, you know, Zuko dealing with being in this hard place. So in this story, uh, the reason why it's called The Promise is that Zuko, uh, as there's, you know, they're celebrating that they've, you know, defeated Fire Lord Ozai and that everything seems like it's going to be peaceful now. Um, Zuko thinks, you know, about his father and about him and, and where he comes from and how he could potentially in the future become his father and, and lose his way. And he asks Aang to make him a promise. And he says that if I ever go bad, please end me like straight up don't like promise me right now like if i ever become like my father in me and the name says yes I, I i promise you so of course you know the whole arcs of these comics are about the potential of zuko going bad again and i really love it because zuko always finds himself in between he he, he never knows which side to kind of go on or, or where his own self-identity is, where his own choices are. And, and all of that I felt like was very compelling to me in this story. And it's always compelling about Zuko in general and also something very relatable because I always, in my own personal life, feel like I'm caught between two places, whether it might be an argument of something or you know, the way someone feels even within the Avatar fandom about how they feel about certain things. Uh, I feel like I'm always like in the middle. Like I don't really agree too much with one side or the other. And I don't know what my own self-identity is all the time. So that for me personally is, is super relatable and I really identified with within the story and I'm glad that they did it. What I also like is that the what was built up in the story, and again, not spoilers, uh, there are several factions who are um, dealing with, you know, the, the, the fact that the Fire Nation has now been defeated. Uh, some of the colonists want them to, you know, move back to the Fire Nation. Um, but the issue with that is that some of these people's lives had been embedded, some of these Fire Nation colonists had been embedded into earth bending culture. So I like that there's this nuance of like, yeah, there's these two sides, but there's also this other third faction that's kind of intermixed. So you can't really say kick out when you know people are married to each other and have families. So all of that, and, and I like that Avatar has always been really good at doing that by coupling, uh, coupling the, the action adventure with the comedy, but also talking about very serious issues like that. Like a, I think sometimes in, some of these children's works, you kind of oversimplify what good and evil is. And Avatar does a good job of, well, you know, definitely you can tell who's good, good and evil in, in these stories. Um, but also there's always that little nuance in the middle of, well, what is the right choice for everybody when everyone has different ideas of what is right? So I think that is a really, I mean, for, for the story to go there, I think it was really, really good. And as someone who is not a fan of Katang, I actually do kind of, I'm okay with them. So long as they're not talking to each other and calling each other sweetie, which they do a lot in this comic. I'm like, why are you guys keep calling each other sweetie? It's so, yeah, I can't get used to that. But other than that, like, like the final bit that happens with them, I feel like I was like, okay, 
I, I can see how you guys work. I can see how this is like kind of a cool dynamic. Uh, but for, for the comic to do that for me and, and the show not to do that, I think it's a, it's a big uh, one up for the comic. Okay, things I didn't like. Um, not much. I mean, anything I will talk about now is mostly nitpicking and not really like an overarching, like, I really did not like that dynamic. Toff's metal bending student, I didn't really like all that much. Uh, I did when they first showed up on the scene, but they become very one note in what their their thing is. And it's it leans more like middle grade than kind of YA, which I kind of like my avatar to be more YA the middle grade and that you know they're very simplistic uh these characters but it does have a pretty good payoff at the end and for one character in particular so i am kind of okay with it but for a little bit there like in the middle of this arc i was kind of like getting annoyed i'm like okay this character is gonna talk about that this character is gonna talk about that and this character is gonna say this like almost every scene i could predict it and that's fine you know maybe for the first few scenes i'm like okay that's their thing but to have it over and over yeah, it didn't really work out for me. And another thing I um, had an issue with, which is a little bit more than a nitpick, I would say, is I feel like Aang's viewpoint in the whole arc was a little bit contrived to, to create conflict. Because I felt like some of the issues that Aang had with the situation that was happening with between the, the fire colonists and the fire nation and the earth kingdom, um, didn't seem like it, it aligned with his character. Like I would think he, would understand um a thing or two about compromise and how you know putting people together and he takes a very stark stance which i kind of understand because there is a, a portion of it and we do kind of see a little snippet of it at the end of book one um at the northern air temple when he had an issue with the um refugees coming to the to the temple and you know messing it up and like you know making all these uh alterations to the temple so i do understand that little bit that he had issues with but in terms of like you know the airbender culture issues he has within the comic but then some other stuff that he talks about i was like really ang wouldn't really i think he would understand you know I don't know. I mean, granted, maybe this is the, again, this is why I think it feels contrived because I know that they're trying to build him up to being someone who would eventually build Republic City. But right now, I don't feel like the, the, the things that he brought up and the things that he was against felt like it was out of line with his character. But those are really only my two issues with the comic. Every, everything else was a, was a joy uh, to, to, to go through. So would I recommend this comic book? If you are an Avatar fan, definitely. I think I should, I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're one of these newer fans who are coming in based off of the Netflix stuff. This is a great way to continue. Like a lot of people are always like, I wish I had book four. I'm like, you do have book four. The Promise is book four. <laughs> like The Promise, uh, The Search, all of the other books that are continually coming out and still coming out to this day are your continuation of the story. Now I understand that you guys want animation and you want voice acted and all that kind of stuff, but this is the next best thing. Like obviously for whatever reason they're not doing, you know, animation with a uh, Team Avatar or Team Aang. Maybe it's too expensive. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. This is a pretty good caveat or this is a pretty good alternative, I should say to not having, you know, an actual animated show. Like a comic book, a graphic novel is the best thing you're gonna have. So yes, if you're uh, definitely an Avatar fan, go for it. If you're not an Avatar fan, I would definitely suggest watching the show first before reading this, though you technically can read this prior to watching the show, but you don't really get the context. There's a lot of Easter eggs in this um, story that allude back to previous arcs and previous you know, character interactions, so you won't really get those. But yes, if you're an Avatar fan, you definitely need to read this. I think it's a very good, uh, compelling tale, has a very good story, a very uh, nuanced conflict. Uh, you get the, the voices of the characters so right. I could literally hear Zuko in my ears anytime he was on screen or on the page. Uh, same with Aang, same with Toph, same with Sokka. Like the, 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 the banter between them is all still there. It's all still great. So definitely I recommend you guys reading it, but let me know in the comments below what you think of the book. If you have read it, do you recommend it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, peace, love, and remember, be water, my friends.